Hello, I'm Rachel Jones with the Finance News Network. Joining me today in Melbourne from Cinetech is CEO Michael Carroll and CFO David Harris. Michael, David, welcome to the network. Thank you. So Michael, first up, could you start by giving me an introduction to the company? We formed the company 23 years ago and two years ago we listed on the ASX. We're specialist engineers and solution providers to industries which are highly complex, highly regulated. Um, we have about 55 people and we're looking, we've done a lot of work internationally and, and locally as well. Thank you. Now, before we talk about your results, could you tell me the key drivers for growth? Our, our growth is coming from, um, we targeted specific industries about four or five years ago, and those industries are rail, uh, LNG, uh, water, and just generally large infrastructure projects which have a very large spend in the next five to ten years. We've developed strategies to pick out niche markets within those industries and develop IP so we can deliver extra value to our clients. Now, David, over to you. Let's talk about your financial year 2019 results. What were the highlights? Uh, the highlights were definitely since listing only two years ago, 111% uh, revenue growth in FY19. Um, this really demonstrated our maturity as a business and in our systems and platforms to be able to deliver um, some large projects simultaneously um, and also some great project diversification. So we delivered projects in LNG, uh, critical infrastructure, um, pharmaceutical and shipping terminals. Um, on top of that, we also returned to uh, positive earnings in FY19. Um, and also some strong cash flows, uh, net positive cash flows. Uh, and also, I should mention that we um, have no debt and we haven't been in a position where we've needed to raise capital thus far. And what can you tell me about the highlights for operations? Yeah, I think also uh, I mentioned that uh, we return to positive earnings during FY19 and this is despite continuing to heavily invest in corporate development opportunities. Um, we've formed some uh, key strategic alliances and looked at some M&A opportunities. Um, and we've also continued to develop very heavily in business development, both locally and internationally. And I think what we're most excited about uh, operationally is we're seeing pull through from a lot of these major projects that we've been delivering over the last two to three years into our clients, either further into that project, onto other projects, or we're now getting invited into their internal engineering team. Thanks, David. Now let's talk about strategy and share price. How is the strategy? Our strategy comprises looking at the target markets that we've identified and overlaying the geographies, the various geographies around the world, and in particular, the Asian uh, geography, China, Japan, and um, you'll notice that our board has um, several, or two in particular, um, Asian experts on it, and they'll be helping us really fine tune our strategy into the future. And in terms of the share price, uh, we listed in August 2017 at four cents a share, and we've had steady share price growth to around five or 5.3 cents as we sit today. Uh, in December last year, we did a clean up of our register through a small holding sale facility and we now have about 520 shareholders on the register. Um, and as we've gotten better at refining uh, our communication to market and a clear communication of our strategy, we've seen a pick up in trading volumes, particularly in the last six months. And to the last question now, Michael, where would you like to see the company in one year's time? In one year's time, I'd like to think that we've got some project announcements which are in our target markets and they're global. I'd also like to see that our alliances are starting to introduce us to opportunities which we would not have otherwise had access to. Michael Carroll and David Harris, thanks so much for the update today. Thank thanks, you. Rachel.